Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. It's time for another light up card hop, and this time we're all using easy lights. Make sure that you check out all of the awesome cards in the hop. These designers have come up with some really great ones and I, I don't think you're gonna wanna miss them. And then make sure that you leave comments as you go for your chance to win. If you're unfamiliar with the easy lights, they are super simple. My husband and I designed them. They've got three lights all attached to wires. You just tape them down where you want them, cover them up, and they're ready to go. So uh, for my cards today, I actually made two cards that are very similar. I created my own alcohol ink backgrounds, and then I'm going to do an inlaying technique for the happy birthday. I'll show you how I uh, lit up both of those little candles at the top and how I turned the eye in birthday into another candle as well. These are a lot of fun. Um, this video is going to be kind of a start to finish video rather than just focusing on the technique. So the first thing that I did is actually created my backgrounds. I've got some alcohol inks and some blending solution. I've also got this real gold. It's an additive. Uh, this one's pretty strong so I, I use it sparingly. In fact I didn't even use it at all in the blue sample. Um, and I'll show you in just a second. Um, I did use this silicone paintbrush and a drinking straw. I've got some alcohol ink paper, and then I've got some regular uh, isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle. You do not want to spray the alcohol blending solution. That has resins in it and stuff, so it's not good to breathe. But you can uh, put regular alcohol into a spray bottle. So what I did was I'm, I'm just working on a craft mat here. I sprayed down my paper with some of that rubbing alcohol. I put just a couple drops of ink to start and then I'll blow it around with the uh, drinking straw. You can use a heat gun too if you have one that has high air pressure but it dries it out pretty quick. Uh, so I like the, the drinking straw method for this and actually you can do that with watercolors too. It, it's a lot of fun. So I'm just going to come in with uh, two to three colors for each one. The, the inks will mix as you go. So try to pick colors that will work together. I'm not adding um, any of the blues or greens into this because it would just turn to mud. So I'm just using colors that are right next to each other. And then for this one, I did want to introduce a little bit of the gold. So what I'm doing is just putting it onto the side. I'm getting my paper wet again with the alcohol. And then I'm going to grab just a little dot of it and kind of float it onto that wet alcohol there. The gold is pretty strong. If I were to just put a drop directly onto the page, you'd get a big blob and it kind of looks brown and ugly by itself. So just a little bit in there goes a long ways. And I'm, I'm going to just kind of move it around and continue to play with this until I get something that I like. And once it's pretty much done, you let it just kind of sit and dry. With alcohol ink paper, it's kind of a plastic coated, so the back might stay wet a little bit longer. So just be aware of that. And then to clean up the mat, I just sprayed a little more alcohol on the pad, or I'm sorry, onto the uh, craft mat and cleaned it up with a paper towel. Now, if you get any on your hands, which you probably will, <laughs> um, you can use hand sanitizer if you have some handy, um, or just that blending solution again. If you spray the, the alcohol on your skin, it tends to dry it out a little bit more than the blending solution. And it doesn't work 100%, but it works pretty well. Um, I just went ahead and repeated the process with my blues, green, and yellow there and got a, a second background there. And it's just the same process. Just keep moving around, playing until you get something that you like. Now, when you make alcohol ink backgrounds, sometimes you get these sticky spots, um, especially when you're using alcohol ink paper. It's, it's plastic, so the ink doesn't soak in. Um, if you want, you can just come back with a powder tool or a scrap piece of foil and just touch down on those sticky spots and transfer some of the uh, foil that way. Um, I also saw a really cool video where um, the person used embossing powder, like gold embossing powder. I'll link to that down below too. It's, it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get started with the cards. I've got two card bases there. I've got an oval that I cut out of my uh, shiny gold cardstock there. I've got a blue um, cardstock circle there. That's the glitter paper there. Um, I'm just using nesting dies for those. And then I've got this, uh, I think it's called the large scripty happy birthday from my favorite things. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out from my uh, glitter cardstock. 
and then I used the smallest die in the more strips of ease set and I cut it out I'm gonna make some candles so I just cut those down to cut one down into four long pieces I've also gone ahead and colored and cut out six of these little raindrops I'm gonna use three for each card this is it's a die that's one of the coordinating dies for this Avery L set um, it's supposed to be a raindrop but it's perfect for a candle flame so I've got that there I've also gone ahead and colored a piece of vellum with those same yellow markers and then I grabbed my smallest circle I think it's about half an inch there from my nesting circle dies I'm gonna use that to stamp the push here button um, so we'll want to cut it out and uh, inlay it there as well so let's go ahead and take a look at how I did that part first thing I'm gonna do is actually cut out the happy birthday from the backgrounds I'm gonna cut it from the center because we're gonna end up using the background for the like the back layer the background layer but it'll be covered up by the oval there so um, or the circle so I went ahead and cut it out from the center I don't have to keep the little pieces for that part because we're just gonna cover it up you're never gonna see it again um, we're also gonna cut it out of the glitter cardstock pieces and we also need to cut out a circle so cut it out both from the uh, cardstock the glitter cardstock and the alcohol ink background piece first I'll cut it out of the uh, the alcohol ink background and off camera I'm doing the blue and green at kind of at the same time just to to keep them both going and moving at the same time so you see I've got that little circle I'm gonna set it aside we'll stamp on it in a minute and I've gone ahead and cut out the gold glitter cardstock. This time I do want to keep all of those little pieces because we're going to inlay those inside the words. And for me, I, I find that it's easiest to kind of keep all of those and inlay them as I go rather than having to, if you poke them all out, then it's kind of a puzzle piece. Which one goes into which little piece, you know, because they're all sort of ovals. Um, so I just kind of inlaid the words or the little pieces inside the letters and then I kind of stuck the letters inside the oval here and I'm gonna flip it over and tape it all down in just a second here if you just use regular scotch tape for the back um, it, it holds it all together and it glues to your background just fine and you can lay down extra tape um, over the parts that you haven't inlaid yet either too and it just catches it all so whichever way works best for you um, now before I get the APPY glued in or stuck in place I do want to um, get my candles done um, so I'm gonna just take two of those little strips and kind of figure out where they're gonna sit how long I want them to be I will obviously trim them down some more and then I kind of marked them but then I realized I need to add my stripes first before I start before I cut them down because it's easier to work with when they're longer you can hold the bottoms to draw the little lines on so I grabbed Copic markers this one is the same uh, sort of pink that's in the background so I use that just so it'll stand out a little bit more but still match and I just added a couple little stripes for the eye in birthday I'm just gonna go ahead and use my colorless blender to remove the color from that paper remember this is alcohol ink paper so it's coated and the ink is really just sitting on top so using a colorless blender removes it perfectly it goes back to bright white and then I can come in and add some more pink stripes to that and it looks like a candle now okay so with my stripes on the two uh, longer candles there I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck them in and figure out how long I want them so that I can trim them down and I will leave them a little bit long enough to actually inlay underneath the P there and you know just kind of mess with it remember you want to leave room for the flames at the top um, in this case they're actually going to be sticking off the top of the oval a little bit when I do the circle they fit completely 
within the circle. So it's up to you. You can inlay them um, so that they stick out above the oval a little bit if you want or not. That's up to you. So after I've got them in place, I'll go ahead and put the rest of the little gold pieces inside. I believe they're called tittles. <laughs> um, and then there was one for that, the R there. So now I've got it completely inlaid and I'll grab that little tiny teardrop or raindrop shape there. And now I'm gonna cut a new space above the eye. So I wanted to get it fully inlaid first so that I could cut it out because I did cut out part of the orange and part of the gold there. And you can see I'll be able to inlay one of the little yellow pieces. And now I'm gonna do the same thing above the two little candles that we pieced above. And I'll run them through and again, they're kind of cut off the top, which is totally fine for this. There's enough room that I can still add tape to the back of the oval and catch the, the two pieces that are sticking off. So as long as you leave enough room to be able to inlay it and, and catch it, it'll be fine. Now I can go ahead and add some tape to the back of this so that I can catch both of those or all three of those little flames there and before i stick the top two flames down at the top um, i'm going to trim away the extra tape it's easier than trying to trim around the um, the shape of that uh, flame there but there's still plenty of tape to actually hold it in place so i don't have to to worry too much about that and now we've got our inlaid piece and it will cover up the background perfectly. Uh, we need the little button for the push here. So we're going to cut that out of the gold piece as well. And then I'll be able to inlay that from the orange as well after I get that stamped. So let's go ahead and stamp that now. Um, I'm using the background basically as a jig so I can hold it in my misty. And this way, in case I need to stamp it twice, it's not going to move on me. I've got this little push here stamp. That's from the Interactively Yours set from Heffy Doodle. I've got that in my shop. Um, and you can just go ahead and stamp it. Because I'm working with the alcohol ink paper, I used Memento ink. This gives me a crisp, um, nice, sharp image. But it's not a really juicy pad, so it's not going to spread out because those words are pretty tiny. I wanted it to be just subtle. I want it there, but not really strong. So after I've got the word stamped, you can see how that'll inlay. And again, I'll just tape it in place. Um, because there are words on it, I'm going to tape it in place from the front and make sure that I get it lined up just right. And now we've got our oval all finished. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring the blue-green one up to speed. I'll do that off camera. And it's all ready. And you see how it'll fit over there. I felt like the orange was uh, blending in just a little bit too much. On, on camera, the blue-green looks like it, it's kind of hard to read, but in person, it actually is very easy to read. Um, it, I think it's just the way the light is shining off of the uh, glitter in the in the camera, um, but in person it's it's fine. So um, I did go ahead and outline a little bit of the orange there just to help that one stand out because in person that one was a little hard to read. So my next step is prepping for the lights. Um, I've got this cool tack, it's clear foam. These are little squares, it comes in rolls as well. Um, you can still find it on Amazon and, and a few other places. This company is going out of business, but other companies are starting to make it as well. Um, so I've got links for that down below. Now what I'm doing is just peeling, I peeled off the release paper for those six little squares there, and I stuck my yellow vellum onto it. And I grabbed that little raindrop, and I went ahead and I cut through all of it at the same time. Um, it did not cut through the release paper, which was great because that means I didn't have to peel it off the back. <laughs> um, now I'm going to take each one of the lights, the little flames that are on the ovals and or the oval in the circle, and I'm just going to use my 16th inch punch and I punched out a hole near the bottom of the flame. And 
and I did that to both panels there. And then now we'll bring in our lights. These are easy lights. Again, if you haven't seen them, they're very simple. Uh, you just snap them apart. They have the batteries separate, so you slide the battery in, press the little purple button, and you're good to go. So there are three lights on each one. They are on wires so that you can kind of spread them out wherever you want them. Just tape them down where you want them to go and tape the battery down where you want it. It's all ready. So at the end of each wire, you'll see a yellow dot. If you flip it over, you can see the back side of the wires. They're little blue and red, tiny little wires. You want to put the lights um, so that that yellow dot is facing in the direction that you want the light to shine. So in this case, I want the, the light to shine through those dots or through those holes that we punched. So I'm just lining it up, putting the little yellow dot right up to that hole. And it'll just fit right in there. I just use some regular masking tape, the same tape that I inlaid everything on the background there with. And I just kind of trim it down and stick the lights where I want them. And again, spin the wires so that the yellow dot is facing in the direction that you want the light to shine. And I had a little extra tape sticking up there, so I'll just peel it back and get it out of the way. These lights do not get hot. You don't have to worry about that. And then now you can see the lights shining there. But the light is not diffused. It's all the way up at the top. So even though it's a, a little hard to tell uh, from the camera here, in order to diffuse that light, I'm taking those little clear foam uh, vellum covered pieces that we cut out and I'm putting it on top. That way it's gonna spread the light out throughout the whole flame, not just have one hot little dot in the center. You don't have to do it, but it's an extra little touch that really is awesome. And again, the button for the easy lights is actually the little purple dot at the bottom. Sometimes people want to push on the battery. <laughs> um, they think that's the button. It's not the button. The button is the little purple dot. So um, that's where you're going to want to line up with the push here stamp. So to assemble the card, all I did is just uh, take some of that PVA glue there and I glued my background to my card base. I like bold colors. Um, so I chose like a hot orange and a, a nice turquoise for my backgrounds there. And then all of the extra wire there, you see that it's kind of got a little more wire. Each one is about seven inches long. I'm just going to curl it up. You don't want to fold it really, if you fold it too sharp of a, a fold there, you could break the wires inside. So be careful with that. Just fold them up, tape them down. And then for the back of the battery, I just put some strong tape. It's a super tape on the back there. And then the... Um, the thickness of the, the power pack or the uh, battery pack there is about double thick. Um, so this, this foam tape is, is double thick tape, and I have that in my shop too. So I just put some all around it, and then I actually kind of grabbed the, uh, the battery pack there with that foam a little bit too. Just to hold it all down, flip it onto my card base, and we're done. So I'll do the same thing with my blue-green one here, and then we can add a few more finishing touches. So I laid out some sequins. I'm going to use my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. This is my new favorite glue for sequins. It works really well. Um, and then I've got some diamond glaze, and that's in a really uh, fine gauge fine line bottle. And I'm adding that on top of each sequin, and then I'm also adding it on top of each light. I just thought it would be pretty, add some shine to that vellum. And if you have any bubbles in your diamond glaze, when you use that fine line bottle, the, the top has a, a really fine little uh, needle in there, so you can pop bubbles with that. So do remember that this video is part of a light up card hop. Make sure that you hop along with us. There are some really cool cards this time in the hop. Um, again, the easy lights are simple. I've got links for those down below. So um, check those out. Um, I've also got links to the next stop in the hop and the full lineup um, on my blog. And let's take another look at the finished cards here. So you can see them in action. I like the way the uh, diamond glaze adds extra shine to an already shiny card there. And I think these are really fun birthday cards. It's a nice special treat. If you're a fan of 
Interactive Cards, we do have a Facebook group called Interactive Cards and Paper Crafts. I encourage you to come and join us. Uh, we post lots of different cards, not just light up cards, but all sorts of interactive cards. So check that out. If you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't be afraid to hit subscribe and click that bell. I've got a few more videos here after you hop along. Come back, check them out. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching.